Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Leveraging Leadership. My name is Kellen Adams, and today I'm with Matt Godinez. He's the Executive Director for the CRDA, otherwise known as the Chanute Regional Development Authority. Matt, welcome. Oh, thank you for having me, Kellen. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey to where you currently are, uh, what's, what's led up to this point in your life, et cetera. Tell us a little bit about Matt, who Matt Ab Godinez is. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually uh, a Chanute native, uh, born and raised. And uh, like a lot of kids, um, when they're 18, uh, took off <laughs> from, from Chanute. Um, and uh, I actually met my wife at Royster Middle School in eighth grade. So we're both Chanute natives. Uh, we got into, uh, after college, got into the logistics and supply chain industry. And uh, did that till I uh, was, a, till, excuse me, for about 13 years. And then um, decided to move back home and was still a vice president for a logistics company based out of Dallas, but I was, uh, was just working from home. And uh, the opportunity for the CRDA came open, and I thought, what a great opportunity to help my hometown, and uh, took over the helm at that point, and uh, been, now that was five years ago. Great. Have a couple children that are students here in USD 413? I do. I have Brock, who is uh, 16 and a sophomore, and uh, Bella, who is, uh, she's 12 and a sixth grader over at Royster. Excellent. Now tell me, did you attend the new high school that we're currently in, or the old high school? No, I, I, um, I attended the old high school, and had the old football field where we had to steal the grass behind the pool. So not this nice turf that these kids are playing on today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I believe a lot of folks know what the CRDA does, but at the sake of assuming that, tell us a little bit, what does the CRDA do? What is their role in, in both Chanute proper as well as Neosho County? Sure. Uh, when it comes to economic development, you really look at it. Uh, the modern economic development is kind of a, a we call it the stool, the three-legged stool. So we deal with business development, which is the uh, retention and recruitment of new and current businesses. Uh, talent development, where we're working with the school district uh, on possible uh, uh, programs that could be coming, or working with, with Kansas Works um, to get the workforce ready uh, for our businesses here in town. And the last part is uh, placemaking. What can we do to make the best, should do the best possible thing when it, to, for its citizens, for its businesses, and quality of life. So, you know, parks, housing, restaurants, all those kind of things. So that's really what to do at the CRDA is uh, all encompassing of those three pillars. Great. You talked about those three pillars. Mm -hmm. Could you expand upon that just a little bit for us? Sure, sure, absolutely. So business development is so much more. I know a lot of people think that the CRDA, we're trying to go out and just get every new business to come to town, but a lot of it, a majority of our work is programming that's for the businesses that are currently here. Uh, we're trying to find ways that they can have good housing for their employees, their, how their you know, uh, skill sets, even soft skills, things like that. Um, when it comes to talent development, how are we working with the school district? How are we working with uh, those current businesses to make sure that through the whole level of their training, they're getting everything that they need? And uh, you know, with the quality of life, it's funny when you, it's such a broad term, but there's so many things that make for a, a good community. And, um, but, you know, we really even, you know, where you most recently have won a child care grant, you know, because we know child care is very important and, and needed in Chinook. So um, we'll just continually work on all those. I mean, it's when you say economic development now, that is a broad stroke. So Absolutely. we have our hands in a lot of things. Thank you for educating me a little bit more on the three legged stool. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about your perception of the current strengths and opportunities as it relates to Chinute as well as Neosho County. Uh, what do you believe those are? What are we currently known for? What are we good at, et cetera? I'm very lucky to, uh, to the, today to actually have had been asked this question by a site consultant um, from Canada. Oh. That's a like looking at the area. And the number one thing that I always brag about when it comes to Chinoo is our mechanical aptitude. Our kids, our most important commodity, um, are so in tune with what it takes to, like the things to do this amazing thing that they're doing here today. Uh, Arise and always brags about the, the CHS grads that come and the way that they know how to do things. Um, we get that all the time. So our mechanical aptitude and the way that we can get to work is a huge commodity for us when it comes to recruiting businesses. And in my, when I was, I've always had a white collar job, but I, uh, my colleagues, when I was in logistics said, Matt, you just come every day and just kind of go, go, go. And I was like, well, that's my hometown. I'm, I'm a white collar kid in a blue collar, or excuse me, I'm a blue collar kid in a white collar world. I would tell them that all the time. And I just totally believe that, that that's just Chanute in me coming out, that hard work of the people that go to work every day and do their job 
and go home to their families and are good, you know, just a good community. I think that that just rubs off on, on a lot of us and I appreciate that. The strength that we actually have right now too is funny because it's anytime you talk about politics, everybody's like, uh oh. But honestly, on both the city and the county level, I have two commissions that right now are open to anything. Bring us a project, let's talk about it. How do, it's not no, but how do we get to yes? Things like that. So that's very fortunate in our environment right now that we can go to them at least and figure out a way how we can work on this together. Some commissions in other counties and cities are like, nope, we don't talk about it. But I've never been told that we won't talk about it. Maybe we don't come to a conclusion, but we at least have the educated conversation if it's a possibility. So I'm very fortunate to have that right now as a strength. Absolutely. So that strong work ethic, as well as that really open environment mm -hmm. uh, that, that is encouraging new ideas and innovation. Absolutely. So that's huge. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned, correct me if I'm wrong, you've been on the job now for about five years, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge in those 60 months uh, that you've dealt with, either personally, professionally, otherwise? Uh, what did you learn from that experience? Tell us how you overcame it. So the biggest, the toughest part was going from, I've been in the private sector my entire life. Going from private to a public nonprofit uh, was one of the most interesting things that I've ever had to do. Um, there's, a, there's a term that I heard a long time ago and it's always stuck up with me because it was dealing with the cave people. Have you ever heard of the cave people? I have, yes. The citizens against virtually everything. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes they can beat down on what you want to do for your community. You just want to do the good things, the best things possible. And sometimes those can become, they, they're just very weighted in their opinions. So I've had to overcome that and just do what's best for Chanute and Neosho County. You just do what's right, you know, just keep your head down and push through. And as long as you're doing what's right and working hard for your community, good things will come out on the other end. So that's one thing that really I just has, has helped out. And with that, I found solace and I surrounded myself with people in, in the county, in the city, people that had similar uh you know positive thinking uh good leadership skills you know i'm a big believer in that the uh if you surround yourself with good people and uh forward thinking people good things will happen i, I very much believe in the the iron sharpens iron you know you surround yourself with with really solid individuals and i'm very fortunate to have a lot of those people in chanute that are very helpful great Yes, as uh, iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. so does one man sharpen another, I believe, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a great quote, very applicable here. So Absolutely. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's shift a little bit to a topic I frequently talk about. It's culture. Uh, it's a big focus for us here in the school district. Uh, culture I frequently define as how we treat each other as we go about the work. Mm -hmm. So for us here internally, it's uh, generally speaking related to teaching and learning. You're in a slightly different arena than we are. Uh, in the K-12. You're in that business arena that you just talked about, both public and private working together. So mm -hmm. what is the culture here in the business community and otherwise in Chinook? What's that culture like that you're operating in? I think that on any community culture, the biggest thing is bringing people together and always having that conversation going. And I think Chinook's done a good job of bringing in different perspectives and if anything, it's funny, in some meetings that we've been in, we always talk about staying in your lane. But I understand though that that's passion that sometimes gets people out of their lane, and that's okay. Better that they be passionate and want to do things that they actually weren't supposed to than want to do nothing at all. So I think that we do not lack for passion at all, and I think we're very fortunate to have that. So by setting that, you know, listening to all perspectives, really bringing it in, I feel like, you know, I understand sometimes we have to segment through the, through the hard stuff, but... I feel we have a lot of players that want to be, uh, see a positive community and, um, uh, you know, very, like I said, very passionate about it. Um, and it just, it's getting all those people to, to align in the same direction it can sometimes be a little tough, but we all want, you know, whether that's more housing, a better downtown, um, you know, what's best for our kids. We all want the same goals, which is great. It's just aligning in that same direction to get there, which we're working on, yes. but the passion is there. So we're very fortunate to have that. Okay, so the passion is present. Now we need that commonly held vision or mission. Exactly. Is that what yeah. I'm hearing? Yeah, it, we want that nice, we don't want the, uh, the, the broad approach. Let's really zero on it. And I feel like every year we're starting to align those lines and getting in the right direction on multiple projects and just the overall culture of the community. Um, but I, I do think we are going the right direction. It just, these things take time. You know, you have, a lot of, you have a lot of personalities and opinions, but I think we're definitely going in the right direction. Great, thank you. 
Uh, you mentioned a bit ago career and technical education. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're like, likely aware, that's a hyper focus here in our district. Uh, certainly something we're continuing to invest in. So talk a little bit about what is the role of the school district? What role do we play in the local regional economy as it relates to that workforce development, workforce readiness, et cetera? What mm -hmm. role do you see CTE playing, et cetera? Uh, tell us what is our lane? What is our lane as K-12? Yeah, you know, that's what um, I, I really do mean this because I go to all these things when it deals with uh, at the Department of Commerce and things of that nature that the students of USD 413 are the most valuable commodity that we have in Chinook. They are our future. So whether that is they go off to college and come back, whether they go through a CTE program, whether they go straight to the workforce after high school, um, the ability for us to make this city the best possible for them is incredibly important. A place where that, I understand we can't keep them all, but if we could stop some of the leakage from losing so many students, because that happens not just for Chinook, but for the state of Kansas. Uh, Secretary Tolan, uh, with the Department of Commerce, even said that they are, are, they are the, the things, our, our best export is our talent. Mm -hmm. And we have some amazing kids in Chinook in Southeast Kansas. And with the ability to catch them, uh, possibly at a point to really explore the career options and the things that we can do for them here in Chinook. Because unfortunately there is that stigma, even from uh, my fellow graduates from the class of 98, aging myself, but that there's no jobs in Chinook. I can't stay in Chinook. I mean, and here I am how many years later and realize that couldn't be more wrong. Yes. There's a lot of great opportunities here. And if we can get that education to our students, get them taught you know, with the proper programming and the right tools, that they can have a really great living right here in their hometown. I understand they might need to go and leave for a little bit, but we want them to come home. Sure. And I think getting that message in through the school district, even down through the middle school, um, you know, we've even talked to you sometimes with the elementary school, that community pride and yes. those skills and things, I think is vitally important of mission or, or a, uh, a tool of the school district to be a part of. Absolutely. So the term I frequently heard is brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, that idea that our talent uh, is being educated here and then obviously leaves and is used uh, somewhere else, typically absolutely. a neighboring state is what I've often mm -hmm. heard. So. Yes. We lose the majority of our Kansas kids to the uh, Missouri side of the metro, of Kansas City Metro. Really? Mm -hmm. So just not even that far away. Mm -hmm. They're literally right across the road. I guess some of the assumptions I would make was that several were moving to, say, Florida or California, but that's not the case. <laughs> no. They, so it's, it's not the Midwest is the, the problem or, or being close to home, um, but it's really just making sure they have the right opportunities. And um, I'm actually said now that I'm obviously older and everything, the opportunities that I weren't aware of in Chinook at that time when I was 18 and wanted to take off and everything are just uh, astounding Great. how many there truly are. And I, it does really, uh, I mean, school districts already deal with so much. Uh, I'm sure just one more thing on the plate, um, but it, it is vitally important for that message to be delivered uh, through the program uh, here in USD 413. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about the group uh, and really the community that you work with. A lot of diverse stakeholders. A lot of these folks don't directly report to you. You're mm -hmm. not their supervisor, uh, but you do represent really the organization that they work with. So talk to us, uh, how do you work with such a diverse group of, of folks? What are the keys to success from your seat? Uh, just help us understand what, is, what does life look like leading such a, a unique organization like the CRDA? Sure. Um, I developed early on my first management position. I was 26 years old. And uh, since that point, I've, uh, I learned quickly that there was only one style of leadership that I could follow and that's servant leadership. Um, that is something that I absolutely have to follow of. You know, I believe absolutely in that take, we all take out the trash mentality, get in dirty with your employees or with your community partners that you're with. Um, you know, the biggest thing that, like you said, such a diverse group. So number one, the first thing I always like to follow is listening, whether it's differing opinions, uh, different ideas, you know, really listening to each person's individual outlook or some, I mean, there's some certain projects that people have brought in that an angle that I never would have thought of. So really listening with an opening mind and valuing everybody's opinions, whether they're a vice president of a bank or, you know, they're an office worker uh, or, or a retail shop owner on Main Street. All opinions are worth the same value. So that's the way that I look at them across the board when it comes to dealing on the community issues. Um, you know, the next that I always try to talk about is awareness, being aware of the many segments of town to make sure that we're focusing on all these goals together 
and and really let's like just being aware of the situation and kind of the temperature of the room is one part of dealing with all those that I've you know really had to work with and but with that though uh it, it's you know a lot of people always say persuasion sounds like they don't like to feel like they're being sold yes but economic development 100 percent is a sales job I when I took over the position I've always been in sales and the first thing I said to the Sierra DA board is I said I'm going to come to this as a sales guy I have to convince both the people of Chanute and the people that I want to get to Chanute that Chanute is the best place and that's where they need to be. So that's why I look at, I'm the salesperson for Chanute every day. So that's what I continually do in, you know, day in and day out, persuade people to stay or to come here or to invest in Chanute, whatever that may be. So I persuade them as much as possible. Um, and really, you know, and I, I know with school districts, you guys are the best at this, is the foresight of taking that team and, okay, that's great of what we need right now. But what do what do my kids need if they stay here? What do they, their kids need? You know, Absolutely. Um, there's some cultures that talk about you know what is the generation, the fifth generation from now, uh, what are we going to build for them? Yep. So that's something that I really try to look at, and I, there's a lot of fancy terms, strategic planning, and all those things for it. But I really try to look at it um, as much as possible about how we're going to affect those uh, down the line. And the one thing that I've really tried to take on. You know, like I'm a, my dad worked at Ash Grove for 30 years. My mom uh, held some office positions here in town. So, but, you know, it was one of those things that I really, I wasn't part of the Chanute community okay. growing up. You know, I, I played football and played sports and, you know, loved all that stuff and everything. But I really look at the, the younger talent when they come here, whether they're new um, or if they move back or whatever of like, you, I try to eyeball and say, okay, you know, in 20 some years, they're going to be a major player here if we can keep them. Absolutely. You know, they're only 23, 24, but man, they could be a great board member or they could be a great president of the CRDA one day, whatever that may be, of trying to identify and get those different voices in. Because at some point, unfortunately, with a lot of these boards, we have a lot of the same players. Yep. You know, so we've been trying to do a good job of getting some of the younger talent involved, maybe those that haven't been included in the past, so they feel that they have a voice and really for lack of a better term, sink our claws into them. Yep. So they want to be in Chanute and really take ownership of all the things that we're doing. So I'm really trying to, the CRDA board, I take pride in it's, it's from when I've started to now is diverse in age and angles and everything like that. And I really try to continue to do that because they're the ones that are going to be on boards when we're gone. So, uh, you know, we got to really have that secession plan uh, for our community. So that's what I continue to work on and really show them that. Um, and include them. I think that maybe they haven't been reached out to before in the past, but I, I definitely always want to include them through that. So engaging some of those stakeholders that maybe haven't yet been engaged. Right. Or the future stakeholders. Future stakeholders. They are very talented. They are going to be a stakeholder at some point and identifying them as such that they would be a great uh, contributor to this community for the long term. Thank you. That's great. Uh, Matt, we're on a journey for a better community here. Uh, I know it's been going for a while, long before I ever arrived, but it's, it's great to see the, the journey for a better Chanute, mm -hmm. uh, that several are, are in going in the same direction in that regard. So talk to us from the CRDA's perspective. What do you believe is next on the horizon for Chanute? What should we be focusing on? Uh, where do you see us going? You know, uh, and it's tough, like I said, I'm the salesman for Chanute, so, you know, but I'd really, truly, um, you can only truly sell something that you believe in. You know, I truly believe that, and I believe in Chinook. Um, I truly believe that growth and uh, prosperity are on the horizon for us. I really feel that way with what we have going on, the talent that we have in place. Um, and it's a slow process. You know, I, I know when I first came on board, a rise and happened really fast, and there's some, you know, hopping up quick. But this is, a, this is the long game. And, um, you know, I really feel that we have some good things going on, and uh, momentum is, like I said, it's a it's a slow curve up, and I feel that we have you know momentum that honestly is uh, uh, there's a lot of s other Southeast Kansas communities that have been going. I mean, ones that we used to play in football that are no longer in our district. Yes. You know, they're shrinking at rapid paces, and Chanute's been able to maintain our population uh, through a lot of changes, yes. and we're actually in a growth mode, which is a rarity for Southeast Kansas right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. So I feel that we are, you know, we got the good leadership. We have out thinking outside the box ideas, uh, but also like we talked about the foresight to to look into the future of how it might change. Yep. So I feel incredibly. Uh, I, I just, like I said, it, and it's not just a line, just because I think that somebody might watch this one day that maybe would want to come to Chanute. I truly believe in the city, the city that I sell every day. Absolutely. Great. 
Well, you're going to get a chance to practice that right now. So <laughs> let's assume that I'm a business owner and I'm looking to relocate to Chanute. We're on the 20th floor of an elevator, or sorry, of a hotel, mm -hmm. and we get on the elevator. What's your 30-second elevator speech on why I should relocate to Chanute? Luckily, I, I meet consultants a lot, so I actually have, I have them only quickly, very quickly at a conference. So um, that you may not be aware, but that Chanute has had substantial growth over the last five years. Uh, that were conveniently located just a mile and a half, or excuse me, an hour and a half between the Kansas City, Wichita, and Tulsa metros. And that um, in addition to the growth that we've already had, we are on the busiest freight corridor north-south in the state of Kansas. A lot of people don't know that about U.S. Highway 169. Uh, the large budget that we have uh, due to owning our own utilities and our own fiber network put us light years ahead of what other city could offer that of our similar size in our area. That's great. Yeah. You are a salesman. <laughs> I think I'm ready to relocate. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, we're very lucky that the uh, international and the national consultants, they are always impressed when they just get to see Chanute. It is, uh, we are very fortunate to have that. Um, our city staff does an amazing job. Uh, we are, I, I don't think a lot of people that, we take it for granted. I took it for granted growing up in it. Sure. Um, but the city staff and the management that we have and how hard they work, we are very lucky to, to have what we have very much absolutely uh, i think this is my fifth kansas community i've lived in mm -hmm. i've never uh, been in one in which we managed our own electric gas water all of that so mm -hmm. i think that's huge for for a community of our size oh it, it puts us light years ahead of what they can they can offer i mean the packages and things that we can do to um really just to make things accommodating for, for a business community are just uh, unlimited great matt we're going to close it out so take yourself back in time that 18, 20 year old, you're mm. headed, to, headed to the big city. What would you say to the leaders? Some of them are in the room, the leaders of tomorrow. What would you say to them as it relates to uh, their, their prosperity, their development, their future with Chanute? Mm -hmm. So this one I, I thought about, uh, you know, I think about this quite a lot. I, you know, you always think, man, what did I tell, my kid, or tell myself with all those years ago? Um, the biggest one that I would say right off the bat is that uh, you have to work incredibly hard. You have to work incredibly hard and there's no substitute for hard work without a doubt um you know that's what uh aim high uh and and ignore the naysayers um some of those that you know when i first took over at the crda they're like you've been in logistics for how many years like you know you're out of your element you're you're it's not going to go well for you but if you believe in it um you know stay true to it and uh work hard at it uh, it'll pay off incredibly well uh, I'm a big believer, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people, it's cheesy, I love reading these books, but set your goals, set them high, but write them in pencil, because they're gonna change. But never stop writing those goals down and trying to reach out for them, and even if everybody thinks you're crazy. Those are great, Matt, thank you so much. Uh, the work ethic, that speaks volumes, the goal setting and mm -hmm. that vision, so thank you. Yeah. I wanna say thank you for the work you do for the city of Chanute, the county of Neosho, uh, and the CRDA in general. Uh, you truly have brought us forward with all of your work. So thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate doing it every day. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kellen Adams with Leveraging Leadership. Have a Merry Christmas.